My name is Dr. Tinsila Basrin and I'm a family physician in Toronto and an emergency physician in Lindsay, Ontario. Today I'll be answering questions about COVID-19 that I commonly get asked in my clinical encounters. So COVID-19 spreads through respiratory droplets. So essentially you would have to have direct contact with the respiratory droplets. Um, usually from a surface that someone who's coughed or sneezed has touched or where the droplets have landed. It's not really floating in the air and so that's why we're not uh, encouraging the use of N95 masks unless you're a healthcare provider doing very specific um, interventions in an emergency setting. So a basic barrier is your number one protection and the second is really good hand hygiene. What does that mean? So that means washing your hands for 20 seconds and that involves going like this with your hands, getting each finger um, one by one and then also this is a common action that we forget. So when you, when you um, wash your hands, you're basically one, getting rid of any dirt, dust, soiled uh, products that you've come into t uh, contact with, but you're also um, basically disrupting the virus's membranes. And so that's very important. Uh, so it's not just putting soap and leaving your hands there. It's a lot of rubbing action. Second, with hand sanitizer, some things that people um, commonly ask are, okay, do I just wait till it dries? No. So again, the thing is, once you take the hand sanitizer, you need to be rubbing your hands. That rubbing action really does help kill the virus. And so it's a really important part of good hand hygiene and prevention. So this is an age-old debate, especially for healthcare workers, and the way that I go about this is that the studies do um, vary a little bit. What we know is that alcohol-based hand sanitizers kill viruses very um, effectively, and as a healthcare professional, I'm kind of doing a double uh, cleaning process. So if I'm going between patients, I know that hand sanitizer works very well and so I'm going to stick to my hand sanitizer. But if I go outside, I'm grocery shopping, I'm touching different things, and I know that I might have some dirt in my hands too, I think I'm going to do both. So when I go home, my goal is going to be to wash my hands clean of any dirt that might be there, which will help get rid of most of the virus. And then I might also use hand sanitizer. Now in the absence of hand washing, um, like a washroom, what I would do is I would then just use hand sanitizer because we do know that it actually works very effectively, if not maybe a bit better than washing hands. Again, that caveat of um, hand sanitizer is not getting rid of the dirt in your hands is important, in which case you do have to wash your hand. So the reason that we need to be quarantined or self-isolated is um, to one, protect everyone in our community. And why is that important? Everyone is throwing out these terms, flatten the curve and you know, stay indoors. You know, why are we doing this? The reality is 80% of people with COVID-19 will have mild flu-like cold symptoms. So a runny nose, sore throat, a little bit of a cough, and they'll recover just like you would with the regular flu or cold. 15% will probably need hospital admission to be monitored to maybe require that extra oxygen and whatnot. And 5% is what we're seeing um, really requiring ICU. Now, if you're looking at a, that, those numbers from percentage, it seems like, well, 80% is great. My chances are pretty good. But when you look at it at a population level, we're expecting hundreds of thousands to millions of people in that, 15, that 5 to 15% um, group. And so that is a very high number for us to uh, accommodate in our hospitals. And it's a very uh, difficult situation that we're seeing worldwide where people are coming in herds, all being equally sick, requiring um, extensive ICU admissions. And so flattening the curve means that instead of going exponentially up um, on the number of cases, we're slowly going up. And so those 15% who need to be admitted can easily be accommodated by our hospitals, by our healthcare professionals, um, in a more manageable way. So I'm seeing a lot of patients coming in with um, a new cough, 
a new sore throat, a bit of a fever, and they're worrying. I mean, if you look on the news, you're seeing that there's community spread and the question on everyone's mind is, do I have COVID-19? So to answer that, I wanna bring you back to the facts. 80% of people will have these symptoms and recover on their own. Along with that, we know that the common cold still exists, the flu still exists, and it could be any of those. So when to come in or when to seek help would be if Tylenol is not working for your fever, if your cough is so bad you're not able to sleep at night, or if you have asthma or something where you need puffers, you need something else usually, or if you're just not getting better and now you're developing new symptoms. What are those? Short of breath, feeling really unwell, you're barely able to get up and do anything. In those cases, you need to be the judge of whether you think you need emergency services or clinical services. In terms of clinical services, we have one, Telehealth Ontario, but the wait times can be long. In that case, I want you to just search up um, your local walk-in clinic or family doctor's office, most of whom are now set up for virtual clinics. I personally uh, provide virtual walk-in services through the phone, and some other clinics offer it even on video. So finding the right resource for you is important in that regard. And from there, the physician themselves can guide you either by giving you prescriptions or guiding you towards getting tested or sending you to the emergency department. Now, if you feel very distressed, some people, you know, you're developing short of, shortness of breath really quickly with these viruses um, and people deteriorate faster. Um, and so in that case, we really want you to go to the emergency department and get checked out um, if this is unusual from your other coughs or colds. We've all seen the panic buying that's been going on um, around us. And um, the real answer to stocking up on groceries revolves around, you know, what, what is the size of your family? What are your needs? And what do you commonly eat? Our goal in all of this, in terms of getting people to work from home, to stay at home, is all about decreasing the number of times you're going out. But that has to be balanced with what's reasonable and feasible. So we want you to buy more than you normally would, but not enough for six months. So you wanna go there and buy maybe two, three weeks worth of food instead of that once a week grocery, you're now going to spread it out to two weeks or once every three weeks. Why? Because we wanna decrease the amount of contact you are with the general public. And so in terms of grocery shopping, I've also had questions from people saying, should I even go to the grocery store? The answer is, yeah, you can go to the grocery store as long as you're maintaining good hand hygiene and being um, aware of kind of your surroundings and keeping that two meter distance between other uh, customers in the store. So I'd encourage everyone to first of all, stay at home if you're sick. There are now online grocery options. There are now online pharmacy options and try your best to stay at home to protect your community. The last thing you want is your grandmother or your elderly parents to be infected by a stranger who just didn't uh, have the right precautions. Now, we also know that that's not feasible for everyone. And so in that case, what I encourage is if you're sick, try to wear a mask. Um, I, I like to give tutorials on uh, how to create your own mask. Now, the point of a mask is not to have the best uh, industry grade mask. It's just to create a barrier. So one, you're not touching your face. And two, even if you cough or sneeze, it stays within the mask. And so creating a mask can be as simple as grabbing um, a paper towel, folding it in half and putting two elastics, stapling it on, covering your face. It could even be just having a scarf maybe around your face. But what, if you do that, make sure you're putting it in the wash as soon as you come home. Now in terms of our hands, um, what I recommend is if you have access to gloves, go for it. If not, you can use your hands, but be mindful that you don't want to touch your face and you don't want to touch everything um, around you. If you're going to go out, um, make a list, get all your tasks done in one day, do everything and when you come home, wash your hands right away, leave the um, groceries there, usually if it's non-perishable, I say leave it there for um, two to three days and then touch it afterwards. If it's something like milk or fruits and vegetables, wipe it down with your um, various wipes 
And for fruits and vegetables, I recommend ones with good peels because I am washing them with uh, soap and water personally. Um, but again, it's up to your discretion. So it's hard to tell how long COVID-19 is going to last for us in Canada because we, ha we are being hit by it a bit later on um, compared to the rest of the world population. Now it's very unpredictable and all of it depends on you guys, right? In the US, we know that they were very slow to socially isolate. Um, they really went about their daily activities in a very densely populated place like New York City. And like I said before, they have not been able to flatten the curve and their hospitals are having an influx of very sick patients all at the same time, all being uh, infectious carriers to everyone around them. So how long really does depend on you guys. It depends on how good our hand hygiene is, how um, much we care about each other and how much we stay at home and really protect all of us.